Rod and Les will widen or bell out the bottom of Nick's new mine shaft by hand. It's one of the most dangerous jobs in an opal mine. The newly dug shaft is soft and unstable. It's a bloody long way down there, Les. Rocks falling 20 metres can potentially kill a miner. Anything that comes down that shaft, 65 foot above, it's coming straight at me. I've got nowhere to go. Here we go. Underground mining, your biggest fear is a cave-in. This is the most dangerous bit. You know, rocks falling from the top, from anywhere down the shaft, your ladder coming down. There's just so many things can go wrong. 70 kilometres from the nearest hospital. A serious injury could be fatal. Hey, Jesus Christ, what was that? What the hell was that, Liz? Hey, what's happening? The bloody heap of dirt just hit me on the helmet. Are you all right down there? Yeah, mate, keep an eye on what's happening, mate. Right, eh? I do have a bit of a slip coming in here. It's not carrying anything, but it's not bad looking down. Look out! Jesus Christ! Hey, watch out! There's some friggin' big rocks falling down here. Yeah, some fell out from up here. I don't know where it came from, but it was a decent bloody rock. He needs another ring. The mine belongs to fellow miner Nick Casement. While the Bushmen have agreed on a 50% cut, for Rod, experiences like this brings the risks of opal mining home. I've been in a few dicey situations before and sort of brings a lot of that sort of back. And, you know, it's, it's not a nice feeling. Our life sort of revolves around colour. And uh, no colour, no life. It might be dangerous, but working Nick's mine is the best chance the Bushmen have of finding Opal. Uh, let's... Rod has no choice but to go back down and keep digging. Just put my eyes on because there's a bit of structure coming in here. What's that? Look at that! <laughs> Look at that! You bloody beauty! Look at that! Green and blue and red all on bloody black. Good quality black opal is worth $43,000 a gram. Rod and Les could finally be in for a payday. Hey, Les, we're on colour, mate! Righto! It's nice too! On black! On black, big stuff? Real, real nice green on black. And there's a heap of black fell out onto the floor. You can chuck us down a little container. Right, eh? Here she comes. Keep his happy as a pigeon. Some blue, some green, a little bit of red. Oh, there's a nice little bit. Oh, ho, ho. You friggin' beauty. It's bloody nice, it's all on black. And I'm getting friggin' half a lunchbox here already. It always pays to do someone a good turn. You got the bucket full yet? Hey, we got a couple of bottlers! This is nice! We could have 20 grand here. I'm going straight up and calling bloody Nick, tell him to get out of his sick bed, come down home and we'll give it a rub. The Bushmen have found a parcel of black opal. It's in the rough, showing good colour, with a weight of 60 grams. 
they hope to get a total of $10,000. The Bushman's half share will be their biggest find for over a year. It's a 70 kilometer drive into Lightning Ridge to meet veteran Opal buyer, Edmund LaHood. Edmund, how are how you, you going, mate? Good to see you, mate. Yeah, good so, to see you too, mate. So what, what you've been on to? A little bit of black, um, black and green. Not bad material, mate. Yeah, nice green. So what do you have on the parcel, mate? Well, for anyone else, I'd charge 18, but for you, I'd probably go down to 14 for you. That's definitely exciting, but colours are there, but I want to see what I can cut out of you, mate. You're open for offers. Oh, sure, of course. I'd go down to 13 9, mate. Yeah. Mate, how does eight grand grab you? Not at all. No, 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 no. Eight grand is fair. No, Come on. No. Uh, you're all uh, don't want to pay too much for it, and you want to bleed us dry. Eh? It's not like that, mate. If I bleed you dry, how do I bloody make a living later on? Well, <laughs> there's a reason why I generally leave Les outside the buyer's room. The old fella tends to get a little bit wound up, and uh, if you piss the buyer off, he'll go down, not up. Oh, you buyers make millions. Give us nothing so we can hardly live. And you choose not to see the bloody inclusions in it. Yeah. That's a problem. You know, you've got to give and take. Right. Look, I appreciate you coming to see me. You know, and uh, look. What about 12? 12. 12? 12. Mate, I'll tell you something. I don't want to play bloody lawyer's game or whatever. I'm very hungry for material. She's scarce now, we all know. Yep. And I'm prepared to pay a little bit more than what I normally do. You know, yep. I'll go up to, I'll, I'll go up to nine grand, okay? Nine, nine thousand. thousand. Nine, nine, nine. Come on, mate, nine grand. Come on, shake a hand on it, Rod. Nah, I can't do nine, mate. I can't do nine. I'll tell you what. what? We'll stop the buggerising about. Yeah. I'll take ten grand and I won't take anything underneath ten. Look, just for the sake of keeping my supply going, I'll shake hands on it, mate. Thanks, Edmund. Appreciate no, no it. Worries. We got the ten grand, which is what we wanted, you know? So we're as happy as bluggery. Yeah. Hey, Rod. She chewed all the belts off when I started her. Oh, Jesus Christ. There's no saving any of them, Les. No. <sighs> what a mess. They're friggin', what, been on there for about seven hours. That's unbelievable. Yeah. We're buggered, Les, because I ain't got no more belts, mate. <sighs> friggin' hell. It's a desperate final two weeks of the mining season for Bushman, Rod Manning and Les Walsh. I mean, it looks good, but there's no opal, no colour. Their ploughboys claim, which they're working for a 50% share with partners Martin and Owen Hutchison, is running dry. Jeez, we've done some work down here. And now, one of their last hopes for opal a rare stretch of virgin ground running along a fault line has also come up empty. 15 metres of digging for that. We dug another probably 15, 20 metres and not a cent. Disappointing results in a season and a mine approaching their end. For the Bushmen, the future is far from certain. We don't find some decent colour soon at Ploughboys. You, you just don't know, Martin and Owen, they just might move on without us. That sort of weighs on your mind a fair bit. Only bit of good luck we've had is the old fella's back and he's going good. I've been a bit crook. I thought I had right river fever. I've had a few blood tests and nothing's come up in them. Just can't sit around and do nothing. Got to be doing something. If I sit around and do nothing, I'll die, and I don't want to do that. The latest setback. No, it's not real good. You've got to do something about it. Yeah, there's got to be a reason why it's still melts. The 220 horsepower diesel blower has eaten its fan belts. With no spares, waste dirt can't be cleared from underground and will eventually pile up and prevent the bushman from mining. 
Once you've got a big pile of dirt around your digger, you can't move the digger and that's it. So, where did you reckon, Les? From that step back in there, just this way a bit. There's plenty of potch right the way through, yeah. right up into the top here. They're hoping a change so, in digging position I reckon, right in there. I reckon in there somewhere. will bring a change in luck before the waste dirt shuts them down. That it? Yeah, in there. Hang on. Oh, oh. Just a minute. That's a bloody 14 inch hole. What do you mean a hole? You've got draft coming up it. Well, how can you have draft coming up it? Well, you put your hand in there. There's friggin' draft coming up there, lad. I told you there's draft coming up in there, lad. Don't fall in the bastard, Les. It looks deep. It does, doesn't it? The Bushmen have discovered a hidden tunnel beneath their mine site, putting it at risk of collapse. Dry. It's dry, but it's a bloody long way down there. Yeah. This abandoned shaft is the only possible access point to the deeper workings and will allow Rod to gauge the extent of any dangerous undermining. These old holes that haven't been open for a long time, you can often get snakes down there. You always look. As soon as you get to the bottom, you always look. All right, mate. Take it easy going down. You don't know the condition of it, what's the roof's like. Jesus. What's the bloody air's like. So, there's a few concerns with it. Holy snapping duck shit, what was that? Yeah, a bit fell from the top under the thing. Frightened crap out of me, Les. You gotta be expecting these things. Can't go off in a dream. Dream. That was a nightmare. Hello. There's a fair pile of dirt there. I'm starting to not be able to slew either way, so a little bit more out of the roof, and that'll be it for us. A faulty blower is preventing the bushmen from clearing away their growing waste dirt. Yeah, we've got a little bit of colour. They're hoping a fast find of opal can still save them in the last throes of their season. The pressure's pretty bloody relentless, you know. I got these partners expecting to get friggin' half a million to a million bucks out of that. I just don't know what we're gonna do now. There's no colour in this. I didn't say it was in all of it. <laughs> you said that it was in some of it, bud. Yeah, I know. Well, which piece was it in? I can't help it if it, as soon as it comes out of the wall, it goes to nothing. I'm seriously worried about you, Les. I am bogged. i got about four or five tonne of dirt around me. I can't move anymore, can't dig anymore. That's it. With little to show for their efforts, Les wants Rod to try and improve the few rough stones they have. You're going to put a figure on what you think's in this little parcel? Oh, yes, a look. There's not many cutters in there, mate. Most of it's crap. A couple of hundred. A couple of hundred, all right. The old fella seems to think there's something in it. Nah, I don't think we'll get anything, to tell you the truth. OK, let's see, mate. We'll go this one first, eh? Bloody sand. Full of sand, Les. Well, we've rubbed a couple of stones and they're just rubbish. That's a bust, full of sand. There's a stone sitting there. Yeah. The old fella appears to be right. The stone's rubbed up pretty good. Probably got 500 bucks in a rub stone. I was pretty convinced there was absolutely nothing in there. The old fella reckoned there was a couple hundred. And in just one stone, you can hit a $500 piece. It's turning out all right. The Bushmen have grey-based crystal opal, displaying colours of blue, green and gold. 
it's been partially rubbed and there's 20 grams. Well, I reckon we ought to have a look at this fella in the sun, Les. What do you oh, think? I reckon. But on the 50-50 split, the Bushman will only have $250 for the entire week, a figure that won't even cover their costs. We're a bloody long way from 200 grand, that's for sure. Time's really running out. Summer's coming. Well, Les, you were right, mate. <laughs> I thought we had bugger all. Open mining ain't rocket science. You just got to keep climbing that bastard ladder every day. When you find the colour, your life changes. Well, I reckon one more minute and he's going to be late, Les. Yeah, but don't like these late people. Not on your first day. He's not late yet, so I'll give him another minute. With Les's health deteriorating, the Bushmen are trialling retiree miner Guy to help Rod in their dangerous claim. I suppose I'm probably going to be a bit tough on anyone that can come in to replace Les. How you going, Guy? Hey, Les. How you going, mate? You Guy, good, is mate? it? Good right. to see you. Pleased to meet you. Les, tell me he's roped you in to give us a hand for a couple of days, mate. Looking forward to it, mate. I love this area. I spent a lot of time in the 60s and 70s up here with my family. My dad had claims at butterfly and, and pony fence. Just be careful getting on. No one to kill you on your first day. And if you fall off the ladder, we just fill the hole in and that guy who? <laughs> Let the machine do the work. You know, just wait, make that sure they go in. That's it. What I'm thinking, mate, it's going to come down. It's only going to come down a foot or two in front. Woohoo! what the f is that? Oh, yeah. Sounded like a collapse. That's what it sounded like. Could have been over the next mine. I'll just check down here. I can't see any problems. I don't think it could have been a collapse there, Les, because there's no dust. No. I don't know what that was, but it all looks OK. When we hear a noise like that, we usually take off straight to the escape ladder. But we never saw dust or anything, so we know nothing came down. Well, I had to go into the doctor this week and get a checkup. <laughs> Come on, move back. Come on, buddy. It's OK. He'll go and see the doctor, but he, he won't tell me what's actually wrong with him. Right, our guy, head down, ass up. You're doing the work of two now, mate. I want to see sparks coming off the end of that shovel. With Les's health failing, Bushman Rod is relying on retiree miner Guy to clear excess sandstone from the mine floor. I hope I can keep up with the pace without Les here. He's not a Les, but he's hell. Shoveling like that, you know, like that's hard on the gut, yeah. Hang on, Guy. I'm just pulling the top out, see if there's anything in the roof. It's a bit slabby, so it's likely to fall down in a big sheet. I've been knocked out a couple of times down here. Whoa! What's going on? Hey, go, Liz. The roof's let go. Oh, that's not real good, then. After an all clear from the doctor, Les has returned to help partner Rod and retiree Guy make safe a dangerous roof. I'm going to try and bust through that bit of steel band there so I can get on top of it to drop it. But there's steel band. It's a compressed clay that gets really hard, you know, it's about six times harder than concrete. get a, a bite. Oh, what can we do? What can we do? Hang on, I might have an idea. I hope it's a good one. <laughs> so do I, Les. So do I. We sort of had to go around to the unsafe side. I reckon, Les, if I get it to crack here in the middle, it's going to come. You don't know whether a big water roof's going to come out or just a little bit. bit like Bugs Bunny cutting that tree branch down and standing on the wrong side of it. That's exactly what we was doing. I'm not sure what's happening. It is cracking, but 
She's pretty tight. With that dropped on your head, you're gonna be dead. Oh. <sighs> this is what makes this stuff so dangerous. That'd have to be 12, 15 kilo, that little bit. That'd break your neck without a problem in the world. And the... <laughs> little tiny bit there, Les, but... I think I can live with that, what do you reckon? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Opal mining's the simplest trade in the world. Shift dirt to your fine colour and try not to get killed. Hey, Les, I can see colour, mate. There's a bit of colour there in that wall, mate. I just dropped it. We've just hit it. This might be bloody good. I scraped down here and I've hit this seam here and I saw it fall. Yeah, how sometimes when it's rolling, you see that little flash of colour? Yeah. So somewhere down in there... I'll have a look. If God likes it, I like it. It fell straight down, mate. You can have a look too down there, guy. Oh, yeah. Have a look at that. Did you get a bit? Yeah. Well, that's a nice little bit, guy, isn't it? It's just a great feeling to pick up the piece. You beauty. Oh, that's friggin' beautiful, God. Eh? Yeah, that's lovely. Greens, blues, reds, a bit of orange. Ah! Yeah, I've got a nice piece there. Got red in it. Blue, green. Look at that. That's lovely. You beauty, Les. It's not big and cheesy yet, Les, but we're getting there, mate. Colour's good colour at the moment. Well, I think it's played out, Les. So why don't we go upstairs and have a look at this stuff? Righto. Chuck him in there. Oh, a couple of little bits there. He's only a small parcel. See that one there? He's just got a thin bar going across the bottom. That's the least valuable. But this one here, that's potentially, you know, it's got black and that red colour coming through the side, Les. Yeah, that's yeah. what we like to see, guys, some yeah, of that yeah. colour there. Good looking colour. The Bushmen have seam opal the most valuable showing flashes of colour on black. It's in the rough, and there's 75 grams. So what do you reckon, Guy? If oh, you were buying this, what do you reckon it's worth? I'm only going to have a guesstimate. I don't know, two and a half, three? Sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, just that stuff there. You'd be struggling to get 600 bucks for that. Yeah. Because they'll talk everything down. Yeah. But this fella here, that one stone's going to kick it up to 1,100 bucks. It's hardly going to get you uh, yeah. retirement, mate, is it? <laughs> I hope tomorrow they pull an opal out cricket ball size and Les can retire. The experience has been tremendous. I think I'll give it a, <laughs> give it a miss at the moment. Just watch yourself, Les, I'm coming across. Oh, yeah. Where we are at the moment, we're following big faults through on the roof. So, the roof is a bit unstable, hence the big lump. I thought I broke my finger there. Keep an eye out for colour up there, Les. Rod may just be clearing space for a pipe, but in an opal mine, oh. any digging... That's nice. Oh. ..comes with possibility. Yeah, we've got a little bit of nice colour. It's looking all right. Les is just undercutting it all now. Our arm's getting sore, Les. Yeah, you're getting a bit heavy. Whoa! Oh, look, 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 look. Poor Les. Jesus, that's a nice stone. We're in for some cheese. Little patch there's looking bloody beautiful. It's cheesy. What we were doing. I was trying to clean out behind this hole here, so we put the bloody blower pipe down. And uh, I think we've struck a little bit of a pocket. In a rare stroke of luck, the Bushmen have hit Opal while clearing access for blower pipes. Keep going, mate. That's moving it. That's moving it. Hang on. Hold on, mate. This is going to tell the tale. Oh. oh. It's hard to see, but I'm pretty sure this is good stone. 
We've just had a little bit of a pocket in there, and it's quite nice. It's a bit hard to tell because they're all coated. I think we might stick her in the tumbler, clean her up, and just see what we've got. But with their new blower due to arrive today, their first priority is to create a hole for its suction pipes. Rod needs the blower to shift dirt to fill in a dangerous collapsed shaft back at his camp. We've got a big pile of dirt down there you couldn't jump a horse over. Without the new blower to clean it out, the digger can't go any further forward. She's stuck, she's jammed. Our laser's is cleaning out that exploratory hole that we want to drop the pipes down. And I'm just trying to figure out where he'll be. It's got to be in this area here somewhere, I reckon. Yeah, I can hear him. Somewhere here. There. See it? Some of them rocks are coming down there. Hey! Oh, hey! Hey, what are you doing? Good on you, Les. You get uh, Employee of the Month award. Now we'll clean it from the top down to make it wider. The old exploration drill hole is 33 centimetres wide. It's now ready to install the new blower's 27 centimetre suction pipes. I'm going to go and give him a ring, Les. See how far out they are, right? Right. But the new blower still hasn't arrived. Yeah, no worries. All right, see ya. They worked pretty late last night to get it ready to bring over. We're at a standstill. We can't do anything until it turns up. Oh, I can see a bit of movement, Les. Yeah. Yes, it's coming. Geez, that's a good sight, seeing that roll oh, in. Oh, shit, it? yeah. We can get digging again. How you going, Owen? Glad to see this roll up, I can tell you. This new blower is going to be so good. We've got the new hole down, so it's right at our face. Everything's going really good for a change. All hooked up and ready to go. Suck a bit of dirt. This thing will make a huge difference, you know, because we had to soak the old blower so much. We weren't feeding the dirt in real quick, but now with this thing, I reckon we'll get an extra truck load out. It all seems pretty good now. Back in business, back shifting dirt, back finding open. That's not sucking. I'll go up and have a look, mate, all right? Yeah, right oh, yeah. Eight kilometres southwest from the tunnel rats. Yeah, it's starving for fuel somewhere or getting air or some friggin' thing. The bushmen have hit problems just minutes after the return of their new blower. Just hit the key again, mate. It seems all right for me. It sucked a bit of air. We tightened up the fit and she's going now. An air bubble had blocked the fuel line. It just got to me a bit. I spat me dummy in the dirt and kicked it around for a while. When you settle down, it wasn't that big a deal. Finally, the bushmen can start extracting the 20 tonnes of waste dirt they need to fill in the collapsed shaft at Rod's camp. I need some dirt to fill that hole in where Amanda turns the solar panel every day. It's not safe for her to need to fill that in. We've got to load the first load with the new blower. See you at home, Left hand down hard. Back you come. Right back. Left hand down. That'll do you. That's it. How'd we go, Liz? There's more up here than down there, Les. Nah. Yeah? Jeez, I don't know, Les. Nowhere near the bloody hole. Well, it is for you to shovel in. Yeah, that'd be friggin' right. It was a bit of a balls up at the start, but at the end we got what we wanted to do done. The hole's full. That's it, Les. Job done. While they've been filling the hole, Rod's tumbler, filled with water, has finished washing the hard clay off their opal find. This might have washed up all right, Les. Oh, OK. 
Oh, shit. That's nice and flashy. The trouble is, it's going to be hard to cut. Yeah. You'll get stones out of it, but it's going to be hard. Their opal is seam crystal, predominantly greens and purple. It's in the rough and weighs 300 grams. Eight grand, I reckon. Yeah, I'd be happy with eight, yeah. Oh, eight, eight, eight it is. Yes. You never know what next week's going to pull out. I know what's going to pull out. Next week's going to be millionaires. That's what we keep on saying. With 50% going to their business partners, the Bushmen are left with $4,000. Well, mate, why don't we go and have a couple of snags on the, on the barbie and a beer? It sounds bloody good. It's knocked a little bit off the season target, but not a lot, because by the time you split it, it doesn't leave a lot. Oh, I think things will change. Maybe not right away, but I think they will change. There's a pocket there waiting for us. The Bushman's season has been plagued with setbacks. Want to go to work? No, mate. My leg's giving me Really? Yeah. On your hip again? Yeah. Oh, I'll go and see the quack. 74-year-old Les's failing health started an urgent hunt for a new mine partner to take up the strain. You're doing the work at two now, mate. Retiree Guy was too old. He had a crack, but he won't make the grade. And 16-year-old Damien, too young. It's just schools of other thought. Thinking about finishing your schooling? Yeah, yeah. I think it's harder to find a mining partner than it is to find bloody opal, to tell you the truth. Hold. The oxygen meter's going off, Les. Well, you better get out of here. Getting it. out of here, mate. Whew. As soon as we hit that opening in the shaft where it went into the drive, we hit some bad air, because this mine's been closed for so bloody long. We give it a few days to, to clear out that bad air, we really need this to fire. If we, if we can't get something here, we're well and truly buggered with the season table. Season's gone. This was sort of it for us. You know, we never had no B plan. This is it. There's just nothing. That's it. Everything looks all right, but I don't really know what I'm looking for. Nor do I, so... Uh, That's all right. That what what about stuff. the new bloke up the road there? What's his name? Ty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he's supposed to be an auto electrician, isn't he? Kai seems to be a bit of a character, you know? He's six foot two or something, built like a brick shit house. And he's riding this little motorbike about this big. Looks like a friggin' pimple on a pumpkin. My name's Ty. I come out here three months ago. It's very contagious, this opal stuff. And I got the bug and just love it. We don't have many neighbours around here, and being you, I just want to make a good impression and. Everyone helps each other out here. Dead as a maggot. Yep. So there's no power to the switch for the start solenoid. I'll just see if I'll bridge it out. I haven't got a bit of old wire, like insulated wire. Does your horn work? <laughs> Not as much as I'd like it to. <laughs> I might be able to just use that bit. You're going to fit in just fine out here, mate. What'd you do with that? No power. The problem's in the key. The key's bugging. Yeah. I haven't started an engine like that since they locked me up when I was about 17. Do we? We can get down our hole now. This mine here, it's been filled in for probably 10 years. We've only got, I don't know, probably that much dirt to shift. Yep. And then we're, we're into the drive. Well, if you need a hand doing anything, um, mate, I'm quite willing to help you. You know, like, just to gain some experience, Rod. Well, mate, if you want to give it a go, yeah, we'll teach you something. Well, there's no one else out here going to show me anything. There's no one else out here. We're chucking in at the deep end, bud. Oh, no, she'll be right. So all you're doing now is loosening the dirt, scraping it into the blower pipe and sending it up. All right, mate, where you go. They've got to learn somewhere. And long as they listen, listening and not bloody uh, thinking they know it all. Let's me out.
This bloke's going all right, Les. Yeah, he is. He's not doing a bad job. He's a big bugger, too. He could hold the ball out to piss. That's it. <laughs> this has been bloody good, you know. We're just about to break through that, that level into the drive. It's very exciting. You know, this, this might be the one for us. Righto, broken through here. Should be able to get out in now, boys. Finally, mate. Looks pretty wild down here. All the tree roots growing through the floor. This is not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. There's a bit of potch up here, Les. Oh, yeah, that's a good piece. Might turn out really good. Hey! Yeah, what? Get back here, quick! Quick, mate! Move, move, move. Bloody quick! Need you back here at the hole. Quick as you can! Les, look at this. How could you miss the bloody crack in the wall? This whole thing can come down. I want everybody out and out now. Start climbing. Jesus Christ. The Bushman's last hope is to relocate to neighbour Ty's claim. You've got to no be safe. No worth your life, mate. Yep. And that one there will kill you if it comes down. Yep. Yeah, well, what about I saw a, a good piece a back here? And show us what you're talking about, old fella. Just here, mate. It's got some interesting little bits on it. We had pots all the way around there. No, that's a good spot, Les. That looks really good. So what are we going to do, Les? We're going to have a carton on the first bit of colour or what? We're going to have a carton. All right, the bet's on. You've got to listen to people like Les because he's got the runs on the board. He's been there and done it all before. Couldn't you have found a softer friggin' spot to dig, old fella? I don't like the jacket. Too many aches and pains in the joints. Young man's game. Yeah, boys, give us a go. Hey, give us a go. You don't have to do it all. All right, you don't have to ask me again. It's moving more dirt than you and me put together, mate. Yeah. Me and Les have been looking for a, a third bloke for a long time. It's a hard thing to do. You've got to find someone that's honest, that's going to have a go, someone that you can get along with. Ty seems to, at this stage, sort of tick all those boxes. He's look at that seam, Les. How nice is that look? Hey, hold on, Ty, Ty. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I saw colour. Did you see colour, Les? Yeah, I, I saw see. something fall. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Pickle me grandmother, Les. Gone. He's gone that's right. a nice piece of stone, Woo! mate. You beauty. Yeah. There's another bit. <laughs> Woo! That's the king stone there. That's a beautiful shell, Les. Oh, yeah. That's All the right. first one I've ever found, besides yeah. that, the beach. <laughs> yeah, well, that's same with me. <laughs> The team have found an opalized shell fossil and crystal seam opal, featuring purples, blues and greens on a grey base. It's in the rough and weighs 175 grams. I reckon that's got to be worth, um, 1,500. I'd reckon, yeah. Oh, we got some nice crystal here. It's got red and everything through there. Look at that. Yeah. I don't know what you fellas reckon. But I think we've probably got four and a half grand in that little pile. Oh, yeah, I reckon. It's bloody excellent, mate. Deep in their Hell's Corner mine, Rod and Les are struggling to haul their two ton digger up a narrow 18 metre mine shaft. I'm going to have to put a fair bit of pressure on it to stop it from going over there a million miles an hour. Because we'll pop our pipes. Now, if they break, the hose bars. We're in deep. We're in. <laughs> as soon as you break a cable, it releases the pressure in your lines which will allow our roof bolt to come down, which will allow the bloody frame to fall. Now, if it goes, Les, if it tips, it's going to go forward, so you go back into that hole behind you. Yeah, mate. Don't worry, I'll be out of the road like flax. Yeah, it's going. This is a real chance of one of us getting hurt. Don't move, don't breathe. 
Just watch that don't go your way, lads. On the surface, their ancient crane, Arnold, is the only thing stopping the heavy digger from toppling over. What are you doing? That's creeping like so you're gonna have to go up and do something with it. The brake drum on the crane isn't holding. There must be broken soil in there, which is a pain in the ass. Here, come up, lad. Do you reckon we can tighten that brake up any? Will that solve any of the problem, or...? Well, that would solve a bit of a problem, yeah. Right, give me my box. And the shifter. Just watch you don't slip there, Les. You know, you see Les jumping around doing all this. He's 74 years old. Most 74-year-olds are sitting in front of the fire with a rug over their lap. Right, crank her up. It's holding. I think it'll be right now. It seems it'll stop creeping. The only way to know if Les's fix has worked is when they lift the digger. If he's failed, he'll be the one under the machine. And just remember the rules. If you kill yourself down here, I'm just filling the hole in. No, I understand that. Too much paperwork otherwise. Well, we're about to start lifting her out now. Hopefully, Les will just get it started up the hole, then he'll come up the emergency hole, then he'll guide it as I'm lifting her up. So this is the fun part, trying to get it up that bloody hole. Something's wrong. Hang on, hang on. Oil everywhere. We've got a bad oil leak. Kill it. We're standing here at the moment. That end's boiling water and spewing out. This end's bloody it's spewing cool. out friggin' hydraulic oil. So it's, it's not that bad, is it? It could be worse. <laughs> The Bushman's 60-year-old crane, Arnold, has sprung an oil leak, leaving their two-ton digger stuck down the mine. I think that's probably the main problem, is the caps broke. One of the caps on top of the hydraulic line is broken. I get a knife. We can't stop the hydraulic oil coming out. 70 kilometres from the nearest mechanic, the Bushman need a Bushman's fix. So what we'll do... Because we'll cut a bit of bloody tree and then whittle it down to the right size and then jam it in there. Now, what part number do you reckon that, that is, Les? Oh, that'd have to go part number 1,569.74. Ah. Is this what all hydraulic engineers use, Les? Yep. We're real, real hungry for money, you know? We're, we're, we're at desperation stage. To pinpoint the best spot for the digger in their new mine, Bondi, they'll test the walls with hand tools first. We need to find colour straight away. So I don't want to be digging for, you know, 20 metres before we find a bit, a bit of money. That's it. Hey, Les. Yeah? Might have something here. Can I have a look? Oh! -ho! That's nice. That's nice. Hey, that's got colour in it, Les. That's yeah, green. That's, that's nice green. That's not bad, Les. That's not bad at all. Ugh. There's more... Uh, more up in there, too. That's a piece. Oh! -ho -ho -ho! I told you we should have come here, didn't I? You wouldn't oh, bloody no, listen to me. You, you just hey? wanted to talk me out. It's big and it's cheesy. Look at that, hey? Oh, look at that thing. <laughs> Some nice bloody colour there. That's red on black, mate. Oh, yeah. That's the money. Look at all the different colours in it. Beautiful, oh. look at that. Yeah. The buyers are going to love that. Here you go, mate. Rod. Mark, is it? Yeah, Mark. You buying, mate? Yeah, mate, I'm buying. You buying? Oh, always buying. How are you? Pleased to meet you. You too, mate. Don't know much about Mark, that's the buyer we're going to sell to today. 
I've heard that he's, he's reasonably fair with uh, what he does, so you can't get better than that. All right, Mark, what I've got here, this is all together in one parcel, mate. Some nice, really nice grey-based uh, crystal in there. It's a jar of it, and there's some bloody good cutters in there, like that one there. And then I've saved the best till last. Have a look at that stuff. All on black. A couple of them got some nice red stones, some bloody nice colour in them. Yep, it's nice stone, isn't it? Yeah, pretty stone, that one, yeah. What are we talking here, mate? You can have all of that for the unbelievable low price of three and a half grand. What's that look for? <laughs> Come on, mate, be realistic here. I am being realistic. This is worth three and a half grand any day of the week. Carl, oh, let's get serious here. What's a, what real money? What are we talking about real money? Bloody opal buyers are all the same. If you sort of, you know, buying off me all the time, I, I can look after you. I'll come down to bloody three grand. Look, let's not muck about here. Two and a half. Done deal. <sighs> Money's on the table. Prefer it a little bit more, but if that's all we're going to get, you, you're happy with two and a half? Yeah. Undo. I think he was OK. He's probably a reasonable buyer. Their opal is a mixture of black and crystal in the rough, flecked with red, yellow, green and blue. There's 16 grams, sold for two and a half thousand dollars. The most the Bushmen have made in 12 months. So me and Les are very happy, you know, we get to buy a bit of diesel, old Les gets to buy a beer in town tomorrow and everyone's bloody happy.